Imagine a world in which infants are trying to make sense of everything. The sight of a face smiling and a voice talking. Who's a silly belly? All of those senses are awake and alive. To me, that's genius. We all are walking around with brains that got forged early in development. Our brains come ready to learn, but they're not completely formed. The infant brain is coding all the time. They're trying to understand what are the signals that mean I'm going to be fed? What are the signals that mean I'm going to be loved and touched? The baby's learning that when I give the merest hint of a smile, my parents go gaga. Viva, look here. <laughs> Felix. They're computational geniuses, but this computational genius takes place through the social channel that codes the most frequent things that happen in their world. And built into that is the drive to do the things that we do so they can be like us. We evolved to make the littlest citizens in the world grow into the full potential adults they become. And the way to do that is to supply innate curiosity and to start with a brain and senses and cognition that's ready to go on day one. Tap, look, tap. Tap, tap. Tap, look, tap, send. You want me to tap the same as you? Yeah. Look, send. You get sand on it first? Okay. Yeah. And we tap it? Yeah. As adults, we have lost some of the creativity of youth. We are not the baby walking down the street, enamored by the picket fence and the bus. With this wide open mind that the poets used to talk about, we have narrowed our views. We're less enthralled by novelty. In fact, our brains tend to keep us on the narrow, in the box thinking and we can already see the decline in the ability to learn like that at seven. There are many ways that we've tried to understand what it means to be human. You can study cave art. You can look at the heavens. And I think one of the best ways is to look at a baby and understand how that baby comes together. We all developed. We all had a childhood and it indelibly affected who we are today.